production just for the heck of it. Yeah, sounds great. Uh, you know, so uh, audio issues fixed, I believe. Uh, okay. So uh, we are live. Go ahead and uh, let's call that a do-over. That is a do-over. <clears throat> okay. Azure Night Gaming, take two. Welcome to Session 5 of the Tomb of Annihilation, presented by Azure Nights Gaming. I am your host, DM Jordy, and gathered here to brave the perils of Cholt, we have Tom, charging his spear-wielding human fighter, Alder Alderbert, right into the thick of the action. Ray and his Bard of Legend, the Lightfoot Halfling Bard, Exeter of None. Marshall runs the wisest of the group, the half-orc cleric of Ilmatur, Thruk Mir. Jordan, playing the noble half-elf paladin warlock, Valbrand Nostador. And last, but not least, however perhaps the shortest, Mark, and his wizard who combines a crossbow and spell, the deep gnome Devis. When we left off last, our heroes learned about the ungodly necromatic device called the Soulmonger that seemed to be siphoning off the life energy of those who had died and raised back from the dead. This device had been trapping souls as soon as they die, thus preventing magical restoration of life. The Soulmonger was said to be located somewhere in the jungles of Cholt. Cinder Sylvain has commissioned the party to travel aboard the sailing ship Coast Runner to explore Cholt. After a harrowing sea adventure that showed a mimic of extraordinary size and a dragon turtle that just needed some extra coin, our party finds themselves entering the harbor of the port town of Nyanzaru. Once in town, our group should meet up with Cinder Sylvain at the villa of the merchant prince Wakane Otomaru. It is currently in the mid-afternoon as our uh, ship sails into the harbor ward. To the uh, right of the entrance to the harbor, there is a large lighthouse. A flame burns atop the lighthouse, shining a beacon to all approaching Zaru. The flame is easily seen at night and in the morning during the um, mists as well as during bright day, as it seems to be right now. You see a large group of lengths of chain dropping from the uh, lighthouse into the water. And then they seem they come up right next to the, uh, right across the gap of water on a uh, small fort. On top of the fort, you can see a uh, couple of soldiers peering out over the water. Multiple ballista are mounted on top of it. What a welcome. So, is that chain going to be a problem, Captain? Oh, no, no, no. That chain, they uh, raise it to prevent people from ships from entering the harbor. Or flee in the harbor if they have some type of criminal record. Where it is under the waters right now, it's just open. Think of it as a gate for a harbor, if you will. Hmm. It's actually it's actually a very ingenious uh, design. A lot of this town is uh, very Amish in design. That's a uh, um defense right there, actually, Not which is Amish. funny. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm from Forgotten Realms, Om. Um, um, yes, um, I know, yeah, but Divas does not know. He says, Om, um, how many um, nations are there? How many people are there? Oh, in the lands? Many, many different ones. In fact, this entire Cholt has its own nationality and its own uh, nation. Uh, Cholt was ran and operated and Nazaru was ran and operated by Om for a long time until um, it was finally well the current uh, populace kind of overthrew it so to speak and their seven merchant princes have taken over in fact that is uh, one of your one of the individuals you're here to meet 
if I remember right. A merchant, merchant. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Wakane guy. Yes, Wakane Otamu. I believe that's who you're here to meet, correct? That sounds, where, that sounds right. Where do the merchant princes live? In the merchant's ward? No, no. That that'd be silly. They uh, yeah, have they have uh, rich villas. Um, in fact, when you when we uh, dock the ship, I'll kind of point you in the direct, general direction. Very well. As you uh, continue in, there is a, a large statue at the center of the harbor um, that is some type of Cholton king in full regalia. Has a loincloth of leopard skin and a headdress of feathers, shells, and tyrannosaurus teeth, draped in a cape of grillian fur and monkey tails. Seems like my kind of guy. Your captain points and says, uh, the residents call that Na Nabusu, the great king. What's so great about him? Um, honestly, I don't know. I just assume he was one of their great kings. Is Wait, he truly a king or another merchant prince? I was under the impression that they ruled this place. Well, a long time ago. They haven't had kings in a long time. Long time. Except for the great one here, I suppose. Well, well I, don't I don't think he's still alive. <laughs> the... Is it always this hot? Brooks is laughing. It is actually. It's a balmy 97 degrees with high humidity, and the sun is currently beating down. That's... No, the, the caves might have been swarming with drow, but at least they didn't make your skin wet. The and the boat the boat bumps up against the um, harbor side. Um, a couple deckhands throw ropes down and. Uh, individuals catch them and pull up the side. You notice off the left side, you see there is a uh, ship that is being pulled out of the water to dry dock. The thing that makes it really interesting about this is the fact that uh, on either side of the, of the uh, planks of the dock, there are these large lizards that seem to have uh, armor plating on their back and a bony protrusion on the on their tail. There is a chain running from each one of them to the uh, front of the ship, and there's a couple individuals standing by them with uh, long lengths of, looks like leather, which they are flailing them on the back and getting them to move. Those lizards pull this ship up and you see other individuals bringing wooden logs and throwing them in front of the ship, which is as they're pulling the ship out of the water. To kind of make, kind of make it roll it up, roll the, up the To roll, roll up, up, yep, yep. Yeah. Roll up the logs into a dry dock. Hey, Valbrand. Yes. Brooks sees the whips and he's just like gripping the edge of the railing on the deck of the boat and looking very angry. What's wrong with those ox over there? Uh, those definitely aren't ox, my friend. Uh, I'm not sure what those are. I can tell you that that tail looks dangerous. <clears throat> hey, fancy yes. pants. Dandy oh, pants. Yes, yes, dandy pants. Dandy the pants it is. The hell are those things? Those, those, uh, that's a good question. They're, they're a type of dinosaur, I know that. Um, I think, what what did they call those? Sore ankles. Alcasis? Alcasosa. Uh, I, I don't know for sure what type they are, but <laughs> they're native to this area. Interesting. This place is... Can uh, I roll a history check? To, oh, sorry. Go ahead. You can. Okay. So, things that you do know, you do know that the peninsula of Cholt, um, there are large, hungry lizards that uh, roam the land, and they're sometimes used, sometimes used as beasts of burden, sometimes used as a food source. You're not sure what type of uh, large, angry lizard that is. But it's definitely a lizard, and large. Doesn't seem very angry at the moment, but you know. Well, 
So as the um, boat comes to a stop, uh, gangplanks are lowered, and you find yourself in a tropical city under the blazing sun. The sounds of the harbor creaking ropes, slapping waves, heavy barrels rolling across cobblestones mingle with voices shouting and cursing in an unfamiliar language filled with clicks, inhalations, and sing-songery words that make it sound almost musical. The aroma of unfamiliar spices and tropical fruit mixes with the wharfside smells of fish, tar, and canvas. That sounds revolting. <laughs> that sounds that amazing. amazing. Well, it's hotter than a dying troll's butt crack here, but at least it's uh, pretty colorful and festive. You guys remember, Balbrand's from the north. Like, all I ever see is white, so I'm just like, <gasps> at everything. Right. What is that? What is that? <laughs> what is that? So are we uh, getting pointed in the direction of our great and powerful merchant prince? Yeah, dandy pants. Where are we supposed to go? Oh, yes, yes. So, oh... Uh... Go to the end of the wharf there. There's going to be, uh, you see that uh, temple right there. That's the, te the one with the cogs. And, hey, real quick, um, could, could we get a ping on the map where exactly the ship is? Oh, is uh, it yes. Red, red little circle. The, the ship, the ship, the okay. ship is right here. Uh, you guys will have uh, ended up right there. So that's where you guys, that's where the party is, is the red circle. Got it. Thank you. And when you said the cogs, you're talking about uh, up top, so, the like just nope. directly to the north. Nope, I'm going to move it real quick. Off to the right, right there. Oh, that hey. building right there has um, gotcha. has a cog. You um, there's you see there's these fountain water jets uh, spearing out in front oh, of it wow. that create uh, just amazing shapes and pictures out in front of him. Um, Danny Pan says, that, that there's a temple to Gond, so just go past the temple of Gond. There's a uh, stairway up. They'll take you up to the villa and make your way along the road. And if I remember right, his villa is the last one on the left right before you cross the bridge. Very good. It was an honor to serve with you, sir. May we never hope... forget Soldier One. <laughs> Thank one. you for the trip. I hope to see you again. Farewell, Fair... my friends. For nice. Soldier One. Sailor One. Ah, oh, you guys have forgotten his Sailor, Sailor One. one. Hey. Sailor One. God bless him wherever he is. Wherever Sailor sailing one into was. the night. Is oh. Exeter composing a song even at this Probably moment? I'm still, I'm still working on it. It's still not quite where I need it to be. To do do justice to Sailor One. Okay, so you guys are going to follow the directions, I assume. Yep. 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 Oh yeah. All right. I'm not about to get lost in this town. So, as my, you... nor my northern friend, are you going to be able to make this trek without falling over from perspiration? Boy, I hope so. Uh, I'll tell you, I love this heat. This is like nothing else. Can I uh, roll a perception check to see, like, what the general, like, is this kind of a seedy place, or is it kind of... Well, uh, go right ahead. I'm going to continue in just a moment, but I'll add a little bit more in as well. So, uh, as you guys step off the wharf, um, Port Naru Nazaru is an explosion of color. Buildings are painted in bright shades of blue, green, orange, and salmon pink. Or their walls are adorned with murals portraying giant reptiles and mythical heroes. Every building sports baskets and clay urns of colorful flowers or is draped in leafy flowering vines. Minstrels in bright clothing adorned with feathers and shells perform on the street corners. Multicolored pennants and sun awnings flutter atop the city walls. A crowd of children dressed in feathered hats and capes races past you, squealing in delighted terror as a street performer, costumed as a big-toothed lizard, stomps and roars behind them. The whole city seems to be bustling, sweating, laughing, swearing, and singing. So the, it's, a very, it's a very busy, populated uh, port town. 
It does not seem seedy. At least the spot that you're in does not seem seedy at all. Like in fantasy fact, Cancun. Fantasy Cancun. Carnival. It sounds the total opposite of, like in Shadows of Om. Uh, you know. Anyway, doesn't matter. Let's keep going. Seems we've arrived in some kind of festival, or perhaps it's just always like this. Passing uh, in front of the uh, Temple of Gond, the Aboxy Stone Temple of Gond looms behind uh, the royal docks. A uh, large gear sits in the middle, and in front of it, there are multiple uh, jets streaming water fountains up into the air. Dolphins, fish, turtles, other th other shapes appear in the uh, dazzling uh, patterns being left behind by the water. As you move up, the um, carved into the uh, stonework is a series of steps. Uh, each of the steps has been uh, colored in a different color, um, brightly brightly colored, in fact. Most of the homes in this area are um, two or three story dwellings. Uh, they seem to be made of a mix of wood and some type of uh, mud. Most of them are uh, painted colorful with different murals adorning them. I like this city. This city is phenomenal. I would like it too if it weren't so blasted hot. I don't know, I kind of find it refreshing. Hi. My brutish friend, you just need to find yourself a good bar here somewhere and cool yourself, and you'll find it far more entertaining. Perhaps, or perhaps some, uh, some good music. As you, Always. uh, as you enter this area, there is a large, uh, temple in front of you. A Sim, um, crystal ball filled with eyes adorns the uh, front of it. The uh, <laughs> roofs of this uh, great dome are tiled, and it, looking at it from the distance, it almost looks like a great eye staring skyward. Do uh, do any of us recognize who this temple is of? Go ahead and give me. Actually, I will take. A religion check. All right. Valbrand is totally not prepared for this, even though he's supposed to be a paladin. Adelbrook, do you re, re recognize uh, Savaras, a deity of wizards, fortune tellers, diviners, and those who unfailingly speak the truth, regardless of whether their listeners want to hear it or not? That's right, there. It's a god of. Sorcerers and wizards and, 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 you know, truthiness for people. And truthiness, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, the eye, oh, the really? all-seeing eye. Yeah, the eye, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yep. That sounds interesting. I, uh, totally think I might have once read about that maybe once a long time ago, maybe. Maybe. Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps, maybe. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you you approach it you approach an opening in the uh, fence let's see beyond there this so the grounds around this villa are green with brush and vines and large flowering plants the in front of it uh, this rather good sized villa sits there with uh, two uh, they're almost like lamp posts sitting out in the in front of the uh, home um, glass globes with what looks like a flame uh, flickering around inside them uh, basically flanking either side of the door hmm should should we just knock I'll just knock. I, I mean, think that's the custom, isn't it? We I, that's I the custom where I'm from. I'll they're expecting the us, right? Uh, I, I hope so. So you you go up and you rap on the door. Um, large 
echoing uh, sound echoes through. And after a moment, a uh, brown-skinned individual opens the door and looks at you and says, Yes? Can I help you? Yes, we are here. Where did my notes go? He's shuffling. He's shuffling cards. We are here to see <laughs> from Divas yeah. Whispers. Wakane Otamu. Wakane Otamu is who we're looking for. Uh, Syndra Sylvain might also be here and waiting for us. This is this is the home of Wakane Otamu. This is also uh, uh he has a guest. Um, may I inquire? Is your business? Uh, yes. Syndra Sylvain asked us to travel down here by ship. Uh, we just got off the ship maybe 30 minutes ago, and uh, she asked us to meet at this gentleman's house as soon as we got here. It uh, it concerns Sandra herself. Oh, well, please, please, come in uh, okay. and wait in the foyer. I will check. He So he opens the door. Um, the pleasant, breezy, tiled courtyard has a splashing fountain and green plants around. Um, more of those uh, globes with the flames inside them adorn the uh, walls. There are a couple. Um, there are a couple dark-skinned individuals wearing loose leathers and carrying spears, uh, standing in here. And um, the individual looks back and says, "Please, please wait here. I will. I will announce." And then he uh, runs off. So you say I've there's never a been bunch of, before. There's a bunch of armed men here. There I'm are two armed, two armed individuals. Inside, I guess, to Should see what's going on there. We're Basically, are they threatening? Laser raptors. Are, are they, they eyeballing us? They're, uh, you know, uh, you know. I mean, we're in a trade prince's villa. I imagine exactly. he's got armed guard. Well, all right, but I wasn't expecting it. Sure, sure. <clears throat> They're, they are watching you, uh, not staring, but you can feel their gaze upon you. Your guess is that they are hired um, guards for Wakana. But, but they don't seem ready to strike or anything so much as just keeping an eye on us. Correct. All right. They're, I almost think like uh, if you were in a... Uh, when you go to a bank and the armed guard there is just kind of, he's not out with his gun drawn on everybody who comes through the door. He's just kind of loosely watching the place, but still on a at dollar. a dutiful readiness. All right. Okay. Sounds good. After a few moments, the individual comes back and then says, please, please, uh, Wakana and his guests will meet you back in the uh, back dining room. Oh. And he he leads you back through. He leads you through a uh, grand um, a grand hall with a magnificently tiled floor, flanked by two sweeping staircases that ascend to the upper floor. More of those globes of light uh, adorn uh, the walls, as well as you see. Um, you see uh, pictures in here of winged beasts, unicorns, and uh, other uh, fantastic creatures. At the very back, he open, he pushes open the door and uh, bows as he indicates for you to enter. Very good. Thank you. As you uh, enter, there is a large dining room table in here. The Dining table is very low, just a few inches above the floor. Uh, there are pillows uh, scattered about the floor. And in here, you see sitting in a chair at the very back is Sindra Sylvain uh, relaxing on one of the pillows is an individual who stands up as you uh, enter. He does a quick, short bow in your uh, place, in your uh, direction, and then says, I am Wakana Otamo. It is a pleasure to meet you. You are uh, Sindra Sivain's friends, yes. 
Well, I don't know if friends is the right word, but, uh, hired help. I don't know, I think we go with friends. Sure. Well, Kalana looks over at Cinder and Cinder says, They are more than hired help. They are indeed friends. It was good of you to make the journey. Please, come in. Seat yourself. We have, uh, refreshments available. I'll do it. I'm gonna go over and look over the refreshments. I'll go take a pillow. Oh, yeah. there, are, there aren't there isn't anything on the table at the moment. I'm assuming that stuff will be brought to you in just a moment. Okay, then I'll take a pillow and sit down. A, a seat that's just fire a table is finally made for my side. I was just thinking, that design of table is quite sensible. It must be very easy to clean. Because I'm do sure that's mean, the point. <laughs> do you mean because of the woodwork, my uh, dear friend? Well, no, it's so low to the ground. You just run over it with a mop or something, and it's done. He takes a moment and looks at it. Hmm. That's an interesting idea. It's not something that we've tried, mind you, but that is a very interesting idea. I might have to have my servants try that one of these times. In the north, where I come from, the tables are grand. Everything's so big, and here, so low to the ground. No, easier to relax after a good meal. What do you do? Stand at your table? That would be hard on the back, would it not? No, we have great chairs that we sit in, and, and they're big enough to oh, kind of just... <sighs> Cindra! Right, Cindra! Uh, likes to uh, lounge in a chair. But me, I'd find it's it's hard on the back. It's much more comfortable down here on these um, enjoyable pillows. But, you know, each to their own, I guess. This is comfortable, friend. Well, tell me, how was your journey? It was It was a long journey to our shores, was it not? It was, but nobody can put a spin on a journey better than Exeter, so I will leave it to him to tell you. It, he uh, kind of looks over at the uh, bard. You are Exeter, yes? In fact, you know what? Introductions, please. I've been, Savannah has told me a bit about you, but please, will you introduce yourselves to me? Why, of course. I'm Exeter of None. I am a bard, a master of lore, and I will certainly uh, regale you with our tale once my compatriots have introduced themselves. To meet you, Exeter. Oh, one moment. Our uh, refreshments are here. He uh, waves in a uh, servant who comes in and puts down uh, clay mugs in front of each of you. In it, it there is a dark liquid. What do we have here, friend? Tedge. One more time? It, tedge. Have you never had Tedge? Oh, uh, it's a... Uh, says I have. It's a uh, fermented honey. I, 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 I drink it. Eat, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I think better, though. Better than the uh, beer and the barley and other things that gets brought over from the ships. I'll take a sip. If it's for Please. honey, it's me. I'm just... <laughs> Please continue. I'll cough uh, a nice little bit. Nice manners. <laughs> the, uh, unfortunately, the sea voyage left my stomach a little sensitive. I will pass, but I appreciate your hospitality. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I will. Please, please continue with the introductions, if you will. Poor, poor Thurik was puking his guts. No, out. it was Valbrand. Valbrand was puking. Oh. This is this is Papa's medicine That's right here. Or or <laughs> uh, or Rook was raised in Luskin and generally is uncomfortable with eating uh, or drinking things that new Go people just to bed. But yes, please, will you continue with the introductions? Uh, I am Valbrand, yep. uh, a warrior from the north, just down to to prove myself. More than anything. Ah. And you, uh, um, you're a dwarf? He points in uh, Divis's direction. Uh, no, although we have good relations with the dwarves, so I won't take that offense to that. 
Uh, no, I'm what your people, off, or what you surfacers often call a deep gnome from far underground. I'm here because a very close friend has been taken by this blasted curse. And we're trying to uh, put an end to it. I'm sure you've heard of it. Uh, yeah, so uh, Sindra has been uh, telling me a little about it. We've had some individuals who have fallen, but uh, dying in the jungles out here isn't necessarily an unusual fate either. The bringing people back to life, uh, it happens. But usually those that have been brought back to life are kind of still dead. Anyways. And, and you, you, my tall friend, um, with that's a, a long, sharp stick you have there. We actually have we actually have thrown smaller sticks that might be a little bit less awkward than that uh, beast. But who are you? Uh, the name is Adalbert, and I'm just uh, an adventurer and a, uh, someone here to to help out uh, on this task. Ah, oh, excellent. And then our last one. You, you, sir, you look like you would be one who would be well at home in the uh, jungles here and uh, dealing with... You look very strong, very uh, able to handle yourself. You would well, be... Well, thank you. Uh, my name is... Well, you can call me Rook. Rook? I... It's nice to meet you, Rook. Rook. Uh, mine, my lord. And, and as you probably been told my name is Wakana Otobu, but you can call me Wakana. Uh, I am one of the seven rulers of this uh, port town and a good friend of um, Zindra over there. And you are welcome in my home. Thank you. you. We appreciate great. it. We are. You are most gracious. So, Sindra tells me that your missions will take you into the uh, jungles of our land. Very, very dangerous. I'm assuming there's more of those uh, big lizards out there waiting for us. Oh, very many of the big lizards, but I wouldn't worry too much. The big lizards are, they're part of the jungle. It's more the undead that you have to worry about. Say what? Un Undead? Undead? Oh yes, Undead. yes. There is a. Uh, there are some. Send some nights the undead walk, and and then we of course have your normal things like goblins and uh, other nasty things like um, well, plants that may try to eat you. But you know, you're probably used to those type of things from where you come from too. Not so Not much. So much. <clears throat> okay. Um. Yes. Undead. Uh, you, you just happen to mention them. Is that a recent development, or have they always been around? Oh, they've... We'll, we'll see. We'll see uh, skeletons and other things. In fact, in fact, sometimes they'll capture the skeletons and, uh, in the Grand Coliseum, periodically. They, they have uh, battles and stuff anyways in the Grand Coliseum, but now and then... Um, they have um, big battles against uh, individuals and hordes of these uh, skeletons that they've captured out from the jungle. Hmm. They, they arm them with wooden shields and swords and wooden swords, so nothing really to worry about much. Sometimes there's some concussions and broken bones on both sides. Huh. But uh, I think Divas's question still stands. Is this a recent development, or oh have you no, guys... Jolt has always had a uh, undead in the uh, in the um, jungles. Interesting. Hmm. It's a big jungle. Oh, in fact, while I while you're here, I have something for you. Um, in fact, um, here, uh, Sindra, uh, and Sindra stands up uh, weakly. She grabs. She reaches underneath. Um, the uh, blanket that's covering her, and brings out a rolled piece of parchment that she takes and sets down in front of you. I've been working on pulling together different uh, charts and maps of the uh, I of the peninsula and 
of the known explored land I have. This is this is for you. And she opens it up, revealing a uh, map of the known area of Cholt. Ah, there we go. Whoa! Hmm. Oh, and we're here sure. at this Port Nyanzaru? Yes, yes, Port Nanzaru. That is that is where we currently are. Hmm. I love the skeleton, cro- skull and crossbones down there. That's so inviting. Oh, those are area. I've tried to mark areas that um, undead have been seen, and um, some of the maps had listed undead hordes were seen in these areas. And so I tried to assist by marking those on the map. Hmm. So do. Any tips you can give us of which way to head? Connie says, I I can help you with that. I would actually recommend, uh, I would recommend hiring a guide to assist you in uh, traversing the jungle. In fact, you are probably going to want to see about accommodations for the evening uh, and probably provisions for the local market before you head out. There are two very good inns um, down by the Red Bazaar. Uh, one of them, the Thundering Lizard. It tends to be very more wild, uh, um, curious, but it's a little cheaper but, than the uh, other location. But if you would like peace and quiet, Kaya's House of Repose is your choice for you. Both of those can be easily found um, in the Red Bazaar, and in each of those inns, there is a market board where current guides uh, have posted their uh, qualifications. I would recommend hiring a guide as you start your exploration of the jungle. I can also, he stops for a moment and reaches under the table and brings out a, uh, two books, one of which, one of which is um, thick and it looks like it's been uh, warped over time to, with water. So these these came into my hands a while ago. This one, and he takes he takes the uh, book and pulls it open to a spot that's been marked in it. It describes a wizard's explorations of various places in Cholt, hmm. but not in enough detail, really, to pinpoint them. The unnamed author does make many mentions that he has a traveling companion a shield guardian named Vorn I can show you on the map where this journal was recovered from if you should it it has a picture. He he flips over and shows a picture of this a uh, jeweled amulet. So this is the control amulet of of that uh, type of uh, creature. And then he brings over and shows a uh, another uh, picture of. Let's see. Wait, did you say turtle? No, no, not turtle. Journal, I think. Journal. Journal. I heard turtle too, but... The man has a bit of an accent. He shows you a picture of... Let's see if I can get it to... Of this large um, creature standing in a uh, jungle clearing. This is what's called a shield guardian. And they have a... um, 
control amulet. If you were to bring find this and bring it back to me, um, this other book that was not quite as damaged, and he pulls out from underneath it a uh, book bound in uh, leather and with some marks on the front of it, and he takes it and puts it out. Is any of your bunch um, uh, talented in things arcane by chance? I'm still learning, and I think uh, Valbrand may know a thing or two as well, not to mention Exeter, actually. Perhaps a few of us are. Well, if you would like to take a quick look, and he turns the book and slides it uh, forward towards you, please be my guest. Well, uh, I'll go ahead and take it, and unless someone else wants to look, or we could both look, perhaps. I'm good. Go for it, brother. So Devious cracks it open, and give me an Arcana check, please. Okay. Oh, there it is. At least he's got intellect, if nothing else. And I missed. I need to move one of my maps around. Give me just a second. There we go. There we go. So, looking through it, um, there are magical inscriptions all throughout this. This is uh, a wizard spell book, oh. and it has a lot, a bunch of spells uh, carved into it. It is in pristine condition for as well. Well, Khan's like, if you can bring me the amulet to that shield guardian, possibly the guardian itself, I will give you this in trade. Oh. Well, well I can't speak for my companions, but for me, that's, that's a wonderful opportunity. If well, you come, if you come upon it, the the journal was recovered in. Let's see. The journal was recovered in this this area, and he makes a uh, mark on the uh, map. Okay. So you should be able to see the uh, red circle that yep. I just put. In. Very good. Now, and a w word to mention. These hexes on a standard point of travel are a day's travel each. Oh, so this is a long ways. And are these things going to be helping us with our overall goal? And he turns and looks at um, that one person. Sildra? Yes, Sildra. 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 Sildra looks and he says... Our overall goal is to find the location of the uh, Soulmonger. I would think that anything you can do to find aid to locate wherever that thing might be might be in the jungles. Perhaps it may not be where you're going. Perhaps it is. Okay, so we get out there, we find find this uh, little it's amulet, one, we get a spell book, and maybe find some clues along the way. It's one source of direction. I would, I would still as well uh, recommend that you, find, you take, see about getting a guide to help you. Some guides know different places that might, or different starting points. Yes, I think a guide is well within. Uh, sorry, let's try that again. A guide is uh, definitely a good suggestion, one that we should heavily consider. Um, anywhere where I can shop for uh, arms, maybe get my sword sharpened, perhaps purchase a new weapon. If we're going to be fighting a lot of undead, I'd prefer a hefty hammer, but all I brought was my sword. Well, kind of looks at you and says, "Friend, you you have come, you've easily come to the uh, right place for that." Um, <clears throat> let's see, you're ha you have your choice. 
of uh, places to go. So let's see. So first, and I'm going to take your uh, guys' little circle and put it there. You have the, uh, well, we consider the three beating hearts of Port Nazaru. Uh, this one right here is the, the Grand, Grand Thruk. It's the, it is, it is a market, an open air market. It's traders from up and down the Sword Coast come to this market to buy timber, spices, medicines. Uh, you can get pretty much anything you want here. Arms and armor can be found here as well. Uh, you also have, we also have a jewel market. Any, uh, I'm marking the jewel market. The jewel market is the second of the great uh, trading hearts of this port. In the jewel market, you're going to be able to find any type of uh, rare luxury uh, item or uh, bauble or jewelry piece, something for the special person or whatever. The final spot that I would recommend, um, and you may have more of your luck there, would be, and let me get my circle to move since my circle's not wanting to move. Eh, here, that. There we go. The final one would be the Red Bazaar, which is this area down right there. And this is this is where you'll find more of your daily needs. This has uh, durable goods and some luxury items. You'll find armors and arms here as well, as well as locally produced meat, vegetables, tropical fruit, light clothing, insect repellent, and, the, and other household goods. That's also where you'll find the uh, two inns that I mentioned as well. Oh, have you not? Are you not seeing the red circle move on the? Uh, sorry, just look inside. I did. Yeah, I think yeah. it's Viper may not be. Though. It was just. It was for some reason. It was uh, I saw it pop up finally on the last one, but the other two it looked like it was. I didn't see it, but it's it's there. Okay. Okay, so there are three markets. There are three grand markets in the port. Okay. Yeah. Um. So the second market you mentioned is that, uh, and I apologize if I'm getting the wrong affect, affect from you, but were you hinting at that possibly being magical items? Oh, you can find magical items at different places for sale. Um, an individual who you would probably, I would probably recommend talking to would be, uh, Ikane Atha, and you will actually find them in uh, the the Grand Sook. That was the first market, right? Yes, the first market. Um, they they have some magic items for sale. There are other magical knickknacks that show up at different uh, stalls or different spots. A lot of things come through the uh, markets here. I'm thinking maybe we should sit down and plan, look at what we got ahead of us and plan out where yeah. we're going before we decide to start spending the money around. No, I agree, because uh, we don't know what it's like to travel in this jungle. For example, I didn't even think about insects. Are too cold. It's too cold for insects to live where I am from. Uh, oh, but we, we get insects. Good-sized ones, too. So perhaps we should sit down with a guide, discuss where we're going, and prepare for the journey based on where we're going first. Then look. I still wouldn't say no to grabbing a uh, a warhammer or perhaps just a, a light footman's face if we're going to be fighting undead and skeletons. Yeah, I uh, I don't think we're rich enough to afford like magic gear yet. Hmm. Uh, I've got a second vote for finding an inn. Yeah. 
So, uh, do we have time? So, like, do we have time to like say do this in um steps, or are we trying to leave tomorrow morning? You, it's it's your guys's. You guys tell me. All right. So it's getting pretty late at this point, right? It's afternoon. You probably should be starting to think about setting yourselves up for it. Yep. Okay. So let's do this. Unless anybody else has a better plan, which let's be fair with me giving a plan. It's probably somebody else has a better plan. Uh, I vote tonight we do minor shopping. For example, I want my Warhammer or Mace or something, right? Something that's going to be pretty easy to find if we just go to an equipment shop. Uh, then we find our end. Then the next morning, we spend the day finding a guide and then provisioning. And then, depending on the availability of the guide, day three, we head out. Okay. Sounds Anybody? No, I like, I, like this, I like this plan. It's a good plan. This sounds good to me. Okay, let's do that. So let's head to the market ward, the third of the... Uh, Again, unless anybody else wants to do something different. Let's head to the Market Ward, the third. Uh, the Beating Hearts. Yeah, the Beating Hearts one. Uh, I am looking specifically. Let's find out what I want. I believe I want a Warhammer. Uh, and then uh, while I'm looking, uh, if if we want to split up the party, while I'm looking for that, we can uh, have somebody go prepare an in-room. I'm leaning towards the quieter in room, although Valbrand realistically would be excited about the rowdy in room. Uh, Rook is going to pick up um, insect repellent and um, any kind of anti venom or anything like that that might be useful in the jungle. All right, so let's see. I'll be window shopping. So, the uh, market is a mass of stalls, wares um, all over the place. Uh, children are running in and out. People are shopping and haggling uh, back and forth. And let me bring up the right one. Let's see. level five i can summon a warhammer no matter where i'm at just wham warhammer so who was looking for insect repellent Me. okay oh. rook uh, there is one individual who sitting there and he is uh he he sees you approach strangers strangers um come look look uh things to deal with to catch the rain that falls from the sky. You'll want something like that. Or or this, this. And he holds up um, two different things. Keep the bugs at bay. The the uh, big biting insects. And fleas. Rook just kind of raises one hand. He's like, calm down. I'm from out of town. There's no need to give me the hard sell. I do need something to uh, protect me, myself, and my party from insects. What can you give me? Well, well. Excellent, excellent. We have... Just the thing for you. And he um, goes over and starts rummaging through and pulls out. We have two things. He takes out this uh, little uh, waxy block and puts it down. This is a block of incense. Uh, when lit, it'll burn for eight hours, and it repels normal insects within a 20, 30-foot radius, depending on the insect. Uh, how much? Oh, I, I apologize. Keep talking. And, and we also have... We also have these. And he takes out uh, a little gourd and puts it in front of you. The little gourd has a... Um, a uh, greasy solve in it, and says this this will protect the wearer against normal insects for 24 hours. It is waterproof, so it will not wash off in the rains. And is there any way to reload the gourd? Uh, well, I mean, you could bring the gourd back, or you can buy another gourd, but the gourd contains 20 applications. So ah, uh, so to 
rub the gourd on your skin or the gourd's no, contents you, on your skin. Yeah, you, you, you take the contents the and rub the contents on your skin. You don't rub yeah, the no. gourd. That'd be silly. <laughs> it's just scrubbing the gourd. Um, in that case, uh, how much is each of these? A block of incense versus a gourd, say. A, a gourd a gourd will uh, cost one gold piece for a gourd, but it has uh, and it has twenty applications of the odorless grease. The insect repellent block is one silver piece, uh, and it'll it'll burn for eight hours and repel insects in an area around it. I will take in that case. Hmm, maybe out in the jungle for a while. I will take five gourds we should... and. Hmm? We should talk to a guide first. We really should we really before should. we start yeah. buying yeah. these provisions. Very well. I will be back, most likely. Okay, okay. I be here. I be here, big man. Does this same merchant seem to have arms? Uh, uh, no, the but there's another one uh, nearby who... Let's see. There is a um, lady at Booth who has uh, multiple uh, weapons and shields uh, stacked around. There are daggers, um, yes. wooden shafts with a type of uh, with obsidian tip on them, oh. and different shields made from wooden frames with different layers of hide stretched over them as well. I am going to walk over and... I'm going to walk over and check out these obsidian-tipped uh, spears. I'm going to walk over and see if she happens to have warhammers, or I guess technically I would accept a flail, too, but prefer a warhammer. Let's see. Is she... Let's see. She does. Uh, she can... She has warhammer and other normal ones. Everything sells for the price um, plus for the price plus uh, 10% of what it is in the player's handbook except for uh, heavy armor and that sells for double the price oh that's okay I don't need heavy armor right now well I mean you do not want to wander the jungle in full plate no I really don't <clears throat> uh, that actually does bring up a good question well I guess we'll ask the guy all right, so then if a Warhammer is 15 gold, you want 16 gold for a Warhammer? Yes, 16 gold would be acceptable. She will take 16 gold. I will take a Warhammer. And then I am going to the next, just to get it out, the next opportunity I have, I'm going to attune to the Warhammer for my Hexblade Warrior effect. Takes a short oh, time. from your spell, yes, from your ability. So yeah, yes. it's not it's not necessarily a magical one, but you're tuning to it from your abilities. Okay, Correct. got it. Yep, got it. Is this obsidian thing? Uh, <clears throat> so, is this obsidian tip sh shaft just a spear? Do you throw it, or do, do you use it for garden, or what? Do you yes. So what these are? Um, so. They're called a yagla, and it is it is a thrown spear. Uh, it is made from let's see, a yikula is a simple melee weapon that is traditional weapon of the Cholten warriors. It consists of a three foot wooden shaft with a steel or stone blade up to eighteen inches long. Uh, and, and although it has thrown weapons property, um, it is not as well balanced for throwing. So it's a range ten foot, thirty foot. So it's more it's more a uh, three foot wooden uh, shaft with a uh, stone blade onto it, eighteen inches long. Um, them look at the shopkeep and just say, "Do you have anything taller than that? So about this size?" And kind of motion to my halberd. Oh, you're a polearm individual, aren't you? Ah, yes, yes. I have a, I have a couple that I know of where I can get a hold of, like that. Is it a spear? What type of, um, what type of blade tip are you wanting on it? Um, something, something sharp, 
and pokey, maybe with another end that's uh, blunt. Good versatility. So she can provide normal, uh, normal. halibirds or spears. Okay. But she doesn't actually have any magical halibirds or spears. The uh, magical items that she does actually have available is she does have uh, arrow, crossbow bolts, and blowgun needles, as well as sling bullets. And then uh, uh, daggers, the yokawa, and shields. Okay, I think and... I'll be good then. Okay. To the in room then? Which end did you decide on taking, guys? Like I said, we should probably, probably. go for the more expensive, quieter end, but Val runs all about the rough and tumble end. I don't know. I'd kind of like to save up my gold. And I think I, can, I think we can handle any ruffians that come our way. Probably. <clears throat> Probably. 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 anyone who messes with us, to be honest. However, it would be uh, possibly prudent to keep our noses clean in a new town. So, did I hear... Which one did I hear? I think we're leaning towards... Well, okay. Diva says... I'm all about saving money. I think I'm going to have to be uh, learn purchasing a lot of magical supplies for translating spells from that book. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we better try and save us some money. Hey, look, Ragar, it's your favorite. If it's your favorite guy, he's right there. You should meow at him all night. All night. Oh, Mr. Gar. <laughs> all night. Until you get a pillow okay. thrown at you. So the thundering lizard, Just I hear, is where you're planning to go. Yes. Yep. I think so. So, thundering lizard isn't that hard to find, uh, partially because the door frame is um, set inside this giant um, dinosaur uh, skull with a mouth wide open. Entering this as you kind of move, there's some a beaded curtain that hangs down in front of the doorframe. As you move the curtain, come in, uh, scent of incense. You hear uh, drumming and and people are singing. And there's a there's actually a pretty good crowd in here this afternoon evening, sitting around at different tables. You're able to find to uh, there is a couple. Serving maids uh, busily running around. You see a uh, larger lady standing behind the um, behind the uh, bar, uh, filling drinks and pushing them out. And uh, you can see a couple individuals. Uh, they keep bringing plates out uh, and putting them onto the bar. Uh, steam every sort of meat and uh, vegetable seems to be piled up onto these plates. I'm gonna walk over to the uh, the bartender lady, and uh, <clears throat> good evening. Like to see about two rooms. The rooms. Wait, one room. Yeah. How many rooms are we getting? How many beds do they have per room? Yeah. How many do you have? Five. 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 We have. We we'll could end up with uh, there's three beds in in a room, so we could accommodate your entire group, or put you into separate rooms as well if you want. Um, our uh, charges are uh, five silver, a uh, five silver a night. Uh, food and food and drink is included. Let's just do two rooms. That way, I can push two beds together and have my own. <laughs> I'm large. <laughs> I am Amadi, by the way. Who are who are you? So I can write it down into my uh, ledger, and I'll uh, let you know which rooms you'll have. Here, I I slide forward and I put ten silver on the bar, and I said, "Say, uh, put the rooms under Rook." Rook, eh? All right. Thanks, Easy Rook. To do. Easy to do. Can I help you in any other way? We have uh, standard fare for food. I'll, uh, if you have any more of it, I'll take some of this, whatever you guys called your mead down here. Patuk? Oh. Patak? 
Tedge. Tedge. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Now, I'll be careful, though. We can go broke on Tedge. So, uh, standard mug is going to be uh, four copper pieces. Uh, and you can get a gallon cask for uh, two silver pieces. I will take two gallon casks, please. No, I'll just take a gallon cask. Okay, give me just one moment. Please tell me the two of you aren't planning to quaff those entire gallons tonight. That's why I'm just drinking the one gallon. I want to make sure I may remain on point. Yeah, that's why I'm just drinking the two gallons. I want to make sure I'm going to remain on point. Do you have any problems with wandering minstrels uh, proceeding to perform? Wow, it's almost as if the fate of the world is at stake or anything. <laughs> it's only two gallons of mead. Oh, yeah. Oh, I only two gallons, is it? And I... <laughs> so I'm having a weird issue with the stream where uh, the cameras are flashing in and out. But yeah, if I disconnect but if I... my second monitor, the flashing goes away. So All right, I'll be right back. Sorry. It's fine. But Mark's camera problems pers persist no matter what. And it's only Mark's. Everybody else's problems go away. Mark, you're muted. I'm special. Ah. So Mark knows I'm, what he did. I might have to either I don't know. Cause like the way OBS is set up, it's picking up the logical program, so I'm like, it shouldn't matter over HDMI. But whatever. Alright, sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, so uh let's see. Gallon casks, you said. So you, two of you were purchasing gallon casks? Yes, and I uh, I took my four gold. Or silver, sorry. Silver, okay, I was going to say. Yeah, it's only silver, two silver for a cask. Okay. Um, do you have any other questions? Any, any things I can point you to, direction-wise? So remember, she did mention that there was a, well, yeah. he, there's a market board. So, we, yeah, that's what I was about to bring up. Yes, uh, we will be looking for a guide. Probably not tonight. We've been traveling all day, but, uh, well, boating all day. Uh, but we'll probably be wanting a guide. Uh, some said he said something about a market board. At, uh, oh, yes, yes. She points over to a uh, wooden board towards the back where there are multiple slips of paper. And you see portraits on them. There's... You can select from any of those guides. If you just let me know uh, who you're interested in, I can arrange in a meeting for you. Or uh, if you want to, Jabal is, he runs the, um, he runs the guild that handles uh, uh, guy, wilderness guides and um, adventures. And so I can arrange a meeting, or if you want to talk to Joe Ball, he can handle it too. But there's the list of everybody on the board over there. Very good. Uh, for our own curiosity, what is the turnaround time on hiring a guide? Like, if we hire one tomorrow, would he be ready the next day? Very much so. Oh, very good. Then in that case, I think tomorrow we'll worry about this. And uh, I'm going to enjoy my mead patoot patat. Okay. What is it called? Tedge. Uh, Tedge. I'm going to, I don't know why I want to put a P in that. I'm Tasty. going to be yeah, silent. Okay. Uh, I, I don't really there want the no, words P and Tasty in the same sentence there ever is again. No, no. There is no letter P in Tedge. Yeah. Thank you. Just, okay. just say it. Just throwing it out there. Uh. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go... <sighs> Yeah, I'm. Valbrand is very interested to try this food. All right, so uh, you guys are going to find a uh, table, right? So I'm assuming you guys are going to gather at a table, right? Oh yes. I mean, well, maybe you're not. Sure. Maybe you'll sit and eat them. Like, Come, friends. Uh, let us gather around a table and feast as companions before we so, start working. Work again. So this this uh the uh, the inn. The tavern is pretty full uh, right now, but you do spot 
you do spot a uh, single table um, that is uh, open except for a, a sole individual. So most of the tables are full, but there's a single table with a sole individual. And um, as you're looking around, he spots you. And uh, oh kind of, boy, Sorry. he takes his uh, mug and uh, waves it in uh, your direction. We don't want any. We have enough side yeah, plus. Thank you. No, this this beer's mine. He's a merry fellow, isn't he? He's trying to get us to come over there. Yes. Well. What the heck? I'll pick up one of my gallon casks and uh, walk over there and sit down with them. What did you do with the other gallon? I'm picking up both my gallon my casks. Gallon cask. <laughs> I'm drinking it later, right? I'm drinking yeah, but it you now. just want to leave it. You just want to leave it on the floor in the bar. It's gonna disappear. So you sit down. Cobalt you sit down around. over here at this uh, table. Everyone pulls up a seat of this individual who's very out of place in the group. He's very much not from around here. And as you sit down, he's like, Ah, oh, fellow friends! I thought I saw other people. You're from... You're from the coast, right? Far away. Well, depends on how you say from the coast. From the coast most recently. Okay. Baldur's Gate. But then maybe we there. are. Baldur's Gate's on the coast. Yes. He, but... I had a sit there. I actually, I actually was recently in Waterdeep before uh, moving out here. And he um, it takes his mug up and brings it out for a toast and says, To the coast! To Baldur's Gate! And then, uh, so he raises his uh, mug to see if you guys are going to toast with him. I toast to Rebus with a whole freaking gallon gas. To Rebus. Takes it and puts it down. So what brings you out here? Uh, my name is Volofomp. Geddon, by the way. Uh, my friends call me Volo. So do we call you Volofomp or Volo? I call me Volo. I'm currently working on uh, this, this, and he uh, pushes one of his uh, novels over to you. This is this is my Volo's Guide to Monsters right now. I uh, brought down uh, signed copies for the Merchant Princes, most of all of whom I actually uh, know personally very well. Oh, you're a writer? Well, let me spin you a magical tale of a brave soldier named Sailor One. <laughs> That well, me off guard. Sure, I, I would love to, I would love to hear your story. I usually I usually go around uh, cataloging places and finding new locations and ah, out. That a kindred right up, soul, a kindred soul. That sounds right up Sailor One's alley. Finding new locations and places. Well, tell me tell me a story. I'll uh, I'll write it down. He grabs one of his uh, um, books and opens it to some clean parchment and then takes a. Uh, a feathered pen, a quill. I'll proceed to perform the wondrous ode that I have uh, created. Go ahead and give me a, a performance check, if you will. Yeah, spin that tail. He was but a lonely sailor. Excellent. He sacrificed himself for us. And that's pretty much all we know about him. Thus ends the tale of Sailor One. Ah, uh, this is great. So you, you say this was a uh, traveling companion of yours. The best. Excellent. A boon companion that, you know, sacrificed himself for us on the way here. <laughs> His name we every, don't even know. Every uh, single one of us in our journals, there's a little drawing of him with hearts next to him. Always, uh, I, never forget. I will record this as one of the uh, <laughs> traveling companions... Uh, Around. May so, he rest well. You're not by chance interested in one of my um one of my uh guides to monsters, are you? Uh, perhaps I'm actually. Always interested in information. Do you have a good catalogue of the beasties that uh inhabit this island? Well, that's been part of where I've been pulling some of the information for. But yeah, I, I do. It, uh, in, this, in this book, I have uh, detailed descriptions and information about all the monsters that encompass both the Sword Coast and uh, a bit of the Peninsula of Cholt that I've been able to learn of. 
is a very reasonable uh, price of 50 gold. 50? Hmm. 50, yes. These are very... How much is knowledge worth to you, Exeter? Be, you wouldn't be willing to maybe, oh, I don't know, bring that down just a little bit, would you? And for a fellow seeker of... I can bring it to 48, but I still have to... I, uh... I, I, traveling took a lot of my resources. I, I actually had to uh, uh, part with this uh, inn that I had uh, to get out here. <laughs> Some of your comments earlier out of character make a lot more sense all of a sudden. Okay. Um, you don't have to have a video. Anyway. Uh, uh, I have an idea. If we all would like, um, if we're all interested in knowing the goings on and the proclivities of the monsters in these parts, perhaps we could all kick in ten gold. And that That's, way, yes, I uh, I actually would agree with that. Uh, even if Exeter is the only one that reads it, if he has any knowledge of what we're going to face in this jungle going forward, it's definitely worth the money. Well, books can certainly be loaned back and forth, but I would well, appreciate. It. Let's let's not get carried away. Can we at least have an example of the quality of the knowledge that we can obtain? Like, for example, we saw these we saw these strange beasts loading uh, loading the ships on the dock. What does your book say about them? Strange beasts. Describe it for me. Um. Well, Divas gives a description. <laughs> Is that acceptable? <laughs> the ankylosaur? <laughs> yes. Oh, that would be a dinosaur. Yeah, I actually have some uh, records over into it. Um, you have multiple types, from the tyrannosaurus to the ankylosaurus. Some are simple meat eaters. Some are more aggressive than others. Some, like the tyrannosaurus, is fully, always hungry and uh, meat-spirited. Yes. Wonderful. But does your book tell us how to kill them or avoid them? Generally, fireworks. But uh, I find most things, when you st stab them with sharpened steel, tends to do the job as well. Um, it, it, sometimes they're good eating as well. I guess down to the bazaar, you can actually buy um, dinosaur meat, which is might be a little tough, but tasty. And sometimes um, avoiding them. There are different ones that you can avoid. Some that I've learned that you need to uh, not be eaten by, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, there's some there's there's uh, things and tips and tricks that I've learned for every type of monster over in here. I have to go AFK for a bit. Continue on without me. Let's see, I'm actually looking. Because I haven't bought it yet. I'm actually uh, looking for a good expert that I, excerpt that I could throw down there. Any chance that he could, that I would be allowed a chance, opportunity to go ahead and just, you know, thumb through it a little bit? Oh, yes, definitely. Again, my problem is. I threw out an investigation check just to kind of get a feel for whether or not it looks good or not. Okay. I can do any other check you might want. So the book itself is um, actually a pretty well set up uh, list talking about different monsters, has some of their weaknesses in it, as well as uh, some ways to avoid them, certain ones that may taste better than others. So it, it has some good information. It's good. It is, it is a wealth of decent information. Hmm. Nah, I suppose. Ten Friends, I will go ahead and pay for it, and then you may all, you know, reimburse me as you feel fit. But I, I believe we may need. I took out ten gold from mine, and uh, I'll either give it to Exeter yeah. or yeah. I guess Divas will be on board if it looks like it's good. Here you yep, go. I'll try along too. May well, you well, thank quest for knowledge. Thank you, friends. He takes one of his uh, tomes and places in front of you. May you have many good returns here in the uh, jungle. I will 
I will uh, be here for a while myself. Okay. Will there be an item to drop in for this? I I will have one for you, actually. I haven't... I'm going to buy the digital copy to add it in now, since you guys have gone okay. through it. <laughs> you know, I do know some things. Let's see. Like the great god U Ubaco? Yeah. So, uh, some, some here, if you're out there, if you're going to go uh, wandering around the uh, jungles, I have heard a couple different rumors back and forth. The great god Ubatu loved mazes. If you happen upon a maze of any kind, trace a, pass, a path through it. You will earn Ubatu's favor by doing so. So the story goes. Interesting. Well, if we happen upon any mazes, could be fun. I don't like you some boss personally, but if we can earn the favor of a divine one, that won't be bad. Uh, just, just keep that in mind. I, again, it, it's rumor and story, but it's a good one. Um, if you find a maze, trace it. And then if something happens, please bring me back stories. Of course, of course. Okay, and the food, the food is really good. It's a mixture of meat with peppers and uh, different vegetables that have been mixed in. Actually really filling. Sounds delicious. This Are food you... is phenomenal. Plan to retire. Are you going to retire for the evening then? Marshall, Tom... Yep. I will spend a little bit of time and spend, and sit and uh, entertain the crowd and also speak with our fair person who received read the book about lore items, but then yeah. Yeah, I'm going to retire then. Yeah. Okay. So I am going to work the room to see if I can come up with any rumors or tidbits of information that might be helpful to us as we head out into the wild. All right. Go ahead and give me Go ahead and give me a. Uh, so you go work the room. Uh, you want to give me? You can give me a, a diplomacy check. I'll take insight checks as well, depending on. Actually, it depends on if you're going to be proactively uh, prodding people for stuff or just kind of out listening. That'll work too. <sighs> so let's see. Well, let's do this. Well, that's interesting. Let's see how that works. Hey. Ooh, that's interesting. The uh, keep, dwar the, yeah, the, the the dwarves are determined to reclaim. Yeah, d d is that shared with everyone or? How do this we... is this is so this is an interesting one here. I just realized I could do this. So over in your guys's uh, <clears throat> inventory, this is a parcel that is uh, being created, and I am going to go drop that over into your inventory, and you can add that in. You can actually take that and add that into one of your character sheets. So what is this? So uh, the uh, table okay. allows me... So you notice uh, over in the uh, inventory, I've dumped it over to the party sheet yeah. inventory. Like so, yeah, so he's out checking rumors. So I can go through and do these, oh. and that's where we... So if I decide to drag that into my character sheet? Yes, you should be able to just take that and dr actually drag that straight into your oh, character sheet. I oh, I saw it for a brief moment. 
There's another one that you overhear. Someone talking about Cholt was once a playground for a green dragon. Her bones mark the location of a hidden treasure trove. If you travel to Mesro and head east along the Laughing Gorge, then south towards Kir Sabal, you might stumble upon the dragon's bones and earn yourself a place in history books. A green dragon, you right. say? Yeah. yeah. Where where does this where does this show up if I drag it in? That's what I'm trying to find. It in should be in your inventory. So it should be a parcel in your inventory. Could we, should we just put it in notes, though, instead? Well, I'm going to dump those in notes as well. Okay. I just thought that was pretty cool. So basically, there are three rumors. Uh, one that you guys learned early on, which um, you were given from Bolo. Then you were. Then you got the uh, second one that Exitar uh, picked up, which was that dwarves are determined to reclaim Wormheart Mine, but a red dragon lives there now. Haven't seen one of them in a while. And then the final one, which was uh, the uh, last one, which was Cholt was once a playground for a green dragon. Her bones mark the location of hidden treasure trove. If you travel to Menzo and head east along the Laughing Gorge, then south towards Kirsabal, you might stumble upon the dragon's bones and earn yourself a place in history books. Let's see here. I'm not seeing any of that stuff on this map yet. Yeah, so we might need a little help finding some of those things. Travel east to Gizmo? Mesro. Mesro. Mesro is uh, Are you seeing it in your... And then... You said southwest? So, if you travel to Mesro and head east along the Laughing Gorge, yeah, then south oh, towards Kyrgyz Hall, you might stumble upon the dragon's bones and earn yourself a place in history books. I was going to East Crap. do you happen to see it in yours? Because I'm not seeing it in my inventory. We need a ranger. The, the what? <laughs> Maybe you so, picked that out. It should show I, up in your inventory, I believe. Yeah, I, I grabbed it. It's oh, in my okay. inventory. Yeah, mine didn't, it didn't show up in mine for some bizarre reason. So I will oh. double check those and make sure they're there. I'm also going to give them to George for the notes as well. And I'll put them into the rumors uh, section in the notes. So we'll we'll have that recorded. All right. So that's uh, what Exter is able to learn in the evening. He also um, ends up, let's see, through uh, work in the crowd, playing a little bit, you end up uh, picking up a total of... You end up getting uh, nine silver pieces for your work at the night. Maybe strum a little tune, playing for a few of the tables. Put on a puppet It all adds up. Nine silver. So it's like excruciatingly hot in this place, right? Uh, it As the evening comes, it cools down and it ends up cooling down into the mid-70s. Okay. So your evenings are going to be in the mid-70s, your days are going to be in the mid-90s. So let me ask you this about the village, the the, the city okay. we're in. Is, is yes. there like a beach that people swim at? No. Okay. There are sharks in the water. Oh, so they're pansies. Is that what you're saying? They're in the, they're the, it's a harbor. Um, yeah. Mo, most of the, yeah, swimming and there is not really a beach front property. It's, it's like a Cancun. With uh, man-eating sh uh, sharks and giant turtles that demand gold from passing ships. All right. You, so. know, you, you know when you see the Disney cruise liner going along, it has to stop and pay a toll to a, a, a giant dragon turtle. Gotcha. Okay, never mind then. So I bad. actually like that. That might be something fun to do. With, yeah. What, a Disney cruise liner with a dragon turtle? Oh, having to actually stop and pay for the dragon turtle. You could fleece all the customers. Or it could eat the children. I mean, they're the already two. paying the mouse. It's true. Okay. So. Now, are you guys going to do a watch? Um, anything in particular? I mean, it's an in-room, right? It is. Do we really need to do a watch, guys? 
I don't think so. I mean, yeah, I don't uh, think that would be our first out of choice. character. Of course, I'm going to be like, yeah, absolutely, we should do a watch. But like in character, like we're in an in, right? Mm-hmm. Brooke, will I... stay up. Brooke will stay up a little late and go to bed a little or er, wake up a little early. But other than that, all right. <clears throat> morning comes easy enough. Um, in the morning, I assume you guys are going to go and meet again down for food. Uh, are you going to check out the market the board? posting of the gu- the market board for the guides? Uh, Valbrand Val will, and anybody who wants to join me, please feel free. All right, I'll I'll check it out. All right, let me just double check one thing, and then I will get you what you have available. Not gonna lie, guys. The uh, the dragon thing, that dragon treasure. Little excited about that. I mean, I know oh, we have sounds like fun. Soulmonger and all, but uh, we don't know where it is. So I mean, we're just gonna be out there wandering anyway. Maybe we should take on some of these treasure hunts and stuff. Well, I agree, especially if they're already dead. That way, with everything going the way it is right now, we don't have to worry about them coming back to life. I'm the only one who thinks it's a little strange that uh, this rumor has been going around that a dragon that was here since before this place was founded still has its treasure out there. No one's gone to pay. No, 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 no. It's absolutely so, not strange at all. So you're telling me in a land with giant walking lizards, undead zombies in the forest, and a giant freaking turtle, the rumor is the odd thing about this. <laughs> Hey, it's normal here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but perhaps that they are not, uh, they're not of sound body enough to go uh, get this. I'm not going to waltz into another person's port so, and tell them how to do things. There <laughs> are six, <clears throat> there are six notices on the board, uh, for individuals. We have, let's see, there we go. We have one. For Azakara Stormfang. Good name handout. I like that. We also have. Man, that's I a lot did of interviews at work today. I really don't want to do more. <laughs> Can you provide three references? We also have a EQ. Welcome to the jungle. We got, we got fun, fun and games. games. We got everything you want. We I can also have. No, oh, too bad. Farul. And Is he just one person? Gondolo. And Gondolo. No, why pay for one guide when you can have. You guys are seeing these, they yeah. pop up, right? Yeah. Yep, yep. Why pay for one guide when you can have two? So, actually, you know what? Let's go through. So, you got the first one. Well, actually, tossing them out to you. Did you mean to share the player's map of Cholt unpinned? No, I did not. Okay. You might want to unshare it, that then. Yeah, it tagged the different things. So, I'll get that taken care of. Yeah, you said there you were s- six people. Yes. So I only got four. Uh, you only got four so far. I'm Holy working. What? Cool. I'm working on that. No, I only got three. I lied. You have three. You also have Hugh. There's Hugh. Seems the rate is pretty standard. Yeah. We also have Mushy Barb. Gotta have Mushy Barb. And River Mist, River Mist and Flask of Wine. Do they have wares if we have coin? This guy's name's River and Flask? Yes. Fox looks like. So you got River Mist and Flask of Wine. <laughs> uh, we can just pay him in skooma. Taboxies. Oh, man, this is gonna... It's going to take a lot of waiting through paperwork. Ooh, like I said, so, I just did a whole bunch of paperwork tonight. 
So I propose we throw these six individuals into the log tonight. Okay. And you guys do your choosing over through email on the best type of guide for you. I, I don't know. I, I think. Unless you could... know already. No, 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 no. I mean, we could look these guys over and then I think next session we should, you know, have some interviews with these guys. Idea. That actually could be fun. Right? Of like, course you could. Like actually do interviews, except for <laughs> yes. like I said, I just I did three job interviews to, or one job interview today and I have another scheduled for tomorrow. Well, then just uh think about doing this how you would like to do the interviews if you didn't have to do them professional. <laughs> what would you do to what I, would you I, do honestly, to a job interview to make it fun? Is this really your goddamn resume? <laughs> <laughs> really? This is what you brought me? I did. I do have a story about. Anyway, so um, back to D&D. &D. Um, <laughs> no, I'd actually rather, I think I'd actually rather uh, discuss this online and then show up to the next session saying, hey, this is the guy we're going to hire. As much as, don't get me wrong, Tom, as much as that is an amazing idea. I just thought since our since our wonderful DM graced us with you know paperwork, we should grace him with the responsibility of six, seven role playing characters. Six, six job do. interviews. Yeah, six job interviews. Oh, and I can do that. I have you know no problems with that. If you'd like, let's do that. Let's, let's do that. Do that. You yourself in ten years. <laughs> <laughs> what would you consider your greatest strength? And now your greatest weakness. <laughs> what do you do in your spare do? time? How do you fit with the team? What is your greatest weakness? <laughs> I'm vague. Can you elaborate? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to have work bleeding. In. Can you tell me what an ARP table is? <laughs> it's what a bard uses, right? <laughs> Harp table? Harp table. What? Hi, Nikki. Maybe let her look over the all the individuals. I, I assume everybody's looked over some of their individuals. Oh, oh, I'm the guy that I really like, but uh, I should probably look at the rest of them. This yeah, we'll look at the rest of them. Free if if we uh, if we. Uh, I'm still reading through them. Oh, good. I'll let so. you guys run through them. Are we going to call so, it yeah. here for the night? Or so yes, it is uh, eight fifty. I think this is an excellent place to end. Um, we'll start again from the morning. I assume if you guys decide and want to let me know if you want to interview everyone or if you want to just interview certain ones, let me know and we can have things planned and we will, out of game, let the um, innkeeper know so they've made the contacts for you. So here's a question. They all ask, or most of them ask for a 30-day payment up front. Yes. Does that mean yes. we that's like a fee that they charge or we're paying for their first month right up? You're paying for their first month right up. So yeah. it's not thirty yeah. days and then we have to start paying them five a day immediately that's, after. I no, no, it's like a just, minimum of yeah. thirty days and then five days, five goal a day after that. Or we help them on the quest. Yeah. I like helping them on quests, more XP and loot. Yep. yep. I don't I don't trust the Taboxy. Why? Um says the orc. Says the orc. They're well. They're really because they're cheap. cat people. They're really cheap and willing to entirely waive their fee. <laughs> they're gonna knock everything off the table when we're trying to eat. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I was writing a scroll and they came over to my inkwell and just <laughs> paw prints all over my proclamations. Oh, they get litter everywhere. That's that's awesome. Yeah, let's uh, let's get these up on uh, on the. Um... Jordy, if you want to spin up the server tomorrow, I'm going over to your house anyway. Uh, sure. I need to get session four in the notes and session five now, uh, and I'll get these guys all put put and recorded in our one note. We can all uh, have a discussion while we're waiting for the next session. Excellent. Speaking of next session, we will, we will uh, run through and figure out our next session in two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Thursday in two weeks. Excellent. Then we will see everybody 
in two weeks on Thursday. Then and I think we can stop your stream at this point, can't o we? October 3rd. Yep, stopping. October All right. 